Australia's connection to ancient India's Vedic culture. Generally, most people don't think of Australia as having cultural connections with ancient Vedic India, but there are many. This adds huge weight to the narrative that elements of Vedic culture were once present throughout the whole world. Allow me to indulge. There's a translation from the Vayu Purana by Dr. D. Martins of the Vaishnav Institute in Vandavan. Chapter 48, verses 15 to 18, appears to describe Australia. It reads, You should know that Angudweep is a very extensive island, filled with Malecha tribes and a multitude of living entities. There are mines full of gold and corals on that island. It is variegated with rivers, mountains and forests, and it resembles a vast salt ocean. A mountain named Chakrakiri, full of springs and caverns of many types, is located there. Its caves offer shelter to various living beings. That great mountain spreads onto many places in the centre of the Naga snake country. Its extremities reach the ocean, the abode of sharks. End of quote. Angudripam, in this context, can be translated as one of the lesser important islands from India's point of view thousands of years ago. Note that the sacred Chakagiri in the centre of Australia is known today as Ayers Rock or Uluru by locals. It is still under the protection of the Anangu tribe today and is filled with springs and caves at its base. Chakagiri can be translated as hill to be circumambulated or one can say hill not to walk on in Aboriginal culture, the rock is too sacred to climb. We find a similar approach to Giri Govardhan in Vandavan, India. Krishna devotees circumambulate the base of Govardhan Hill, but never climb it. Back to commenting on the Puranic text. Australia is indeed famous for its coastal coral reefs and sharks. Not forgetting snakes. The opening line of the quote mentions a multitude of living entities. We know that Australia has many unique indigenous animal species. Now onto the human tribes. Everyone knows that the Aborigines have lived in Australia for at least the last 55,000 years. A study suggests that the genes of Aborigines in the Northern Territories can be traced to migrants who reached there around 2200 BCE from India and they brought with them the dingo who are notably similar to Indian dogs. The Gondi tribe is one of the Aboriginal tribes of central India. Their tribal art and that of the Bill in western India is similar to Australian Aboriginal art. Granite artifacts of Lord Ganesh and a goddess seated on a lotus flower have been found in the Gimbi ruins in Queensland. The Kabi Kabi claimed this area was an ancient sacred site important for their dreaming concerning the Seven Sisters, or the Pleiades. In the Puranas, there's the similar Saptarishi, the Seven Sages. With the body painting that Aborigines wear during sacred ceremonies, one cannot help notice similarities with the Indian Nagababas. Many Aboriginal people are very spiritual. They have their strong beliefs, but it's more like a paradigm instead of a Western-based concept of institutionalized religion. Traditional beliefs include a natural world with many superior beings who are part human in terms of their emotions, part bird or reptile in terms of physical shape, and part superhuman. A nature, for example, is the Aboriginal creator god. This is an image of him from the Ardhem land in the Northern Territory. It's made of carved wood with decorations. Here he is again. The Uran tribe worshipped the Sky Father and Mother Earth. Note in Sanskrit, Uru means Earth. Many Aboriginal groups interpret the Great Rift in the Milky Way as a river in the sky. This is similar to the Vedic, where the Milky Way forms the Ganges River. 
Aboriginal people refer to the period of creation as dream time. The time after that, including today, is called dreaming. Forms in this world are temporary, and time is a cycle. Compare that to the Vedic conception of cyclic time and the reality of this world. This material world is called Maya, illusionary, because it is temporary. And in the Bhagavad Purana, we learn that the Supreme Lord, in the form of Mahavishnu, is semi-conscious as the cosmos emanates from his skin. So, this world is indeed dreamlike. Thanks for watching. Now, please, share with others.